miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Good evening, everybody. It's Mark Klein hanging out with you. Welcome to another Long Island Blues Warehouse, EKO Studios, Deer Park, New York. Always remember to go to ekoproductions.com for further information on those boys. And for the Blues Warehouse, always go to liblues.com. Check out all these great webisodes we're shooting. Tonight, we are talking to an artist that has been performing in the New York tri-state area for over 15 years now. She has performed, recorded, and or opened for Les Paul, Joan Osborne, Dave Mason, Dickie Betts, Hubert Sumlin, Coco Montoya, just to name a few. Tonight, we welcome New York Blues Hall of Fame inductee, Nikki Armstrong, and whole lot of blues. Giving it right back at you, darling. Yes, I will. Oh. This week's featured artist, Nikki Armstrong, and a whole lot of blues. Nikki Armstrong. 
Mr. Mark Klein. Welcome to the Blues Warehouse, kid. Thank you. Let me Thanks start by saying, us. great job with that first one. Thank you. I play that song on my Friday morning show at WUSB in Stony Brook, and I get some great, it's such a well-received tune. Oh, I'm so glad to get hear that. You get a lot of great response to that tune, so I'm glad you worked that in the set list tonight. Thank you, and you have a wonderful program, by the way. Well, thank you so much, and so do you, by the way, <laughs> which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Okay, cool. Um, fellow DJ, and uh, pretty cool. I want to start with some history, if I can. Let's begin. Sure. Let's talk about when you began musically. Were you singing when you were like this no. big, or you no. started? How old no. were you when you? Uh, in my twenties. You started in your twenties. Yeah. Now, what led you to believe in your 20s this was something you wanted to do? Uh, you must well, have sung. I wanted to do it when I was a kid, but I just never got to do it until I got to later. I danced and I acted and I did all that. And I picked up some cool <laughs> dance moves there. So that makes sense. That makes sense. But so junior high and high school days, it, it's not something you didn't want to no. form a band and, and, I, and front a project? I didn't have the opportunity, believe it or not. I was busy dancing. I was. So, okay. Yeah. So it was later that I just sort of, it sort of caught back up with me, and all went, all of a sudden one day I went, oh, that's right, I wanted to sing, and then I just started. And when you started, was it with school? Was it at bars, garage bands? What were you? Uh, how'd you Actually, I started. I, I said I'm going to take some lessons. I took some lessons, and in three months I had a production deal. No kidding. Yeah. No kidding. Um, what was the name of your first project? Nikki Armstrong and yeah, just Nikki Armstrong. Okay, were you were you playing locally? Were no, you I I actually didn't do anything but write and record for the first like ten years. I really didn't perform as a singer. I performed as a dancer and an actress, and I was writing and I was trying to. I got a record deal and then it fell through, and then I got another record deal. Then when I went to Australia, then I went to L.A. I here I am. Great material for <laughs> some blues albums. Yeah, right. It sounds like. <laughs> it sounds go. like. So you were all over the place. Yeah. Um, let's talk about when you started gigging out live, like all the time. Uh, that was about 15 years ago. I actually had a band before this, and it was started out as a as a show band, and it was like a takeoff of the Blues Brothers. You know the Blues Brothers. I, I've heard, I, yeah. I think I heard of them. It was like the Blues Sisters. It was called Ruby and Toots, the Blues Sisters. Ruby and Toots. Yeah, I was Toots. Sounds like a great name for a song. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, so, I, I mean, I know you've done BB Kings. I know you've played overseas. You've done cruises. Yes. Um, how'd you get involved in the cruises? Let's start with that. How'd you get oh, involved? Oh, that in that was before I was even singing blues. It was just just a fluke. A, a fluke, just being at the right place at the right time. Yeah, kind it was of thing? one of those. Yeah. <laughs> very cool, very cool. You've got some interesting history. You've done some cool things, and we're going to come back and chat more about okay. that later. We'll continue the Nikki Armstrong journey. We'll come back and talk to some of these fine players. Let's, uh, let's keep it moving. Let's put you people back to work. Okay, this next song we're going to do was uh, written by a good friend of mine, an associate songwriter. He wrote this song called The Cure. Mr. Dave Fields wrote it. You good to go? Yep. Long Island Blues Warehouse. We're going to keep it moving with Nikki Armstrong and a whole lot of blues. When your heart starts feel lonely That girl and you had a fight Forget about her big boy I'll make it right Cause when you hurt Baby, when you hurt You got the lonely, lonely, lonely blues But baby, I've got the cure Your boss starts getting on you And money's getting low The world's all caving in on you But honey, oh, you know where to go Cause when you hurt Oh, baby, when you hurt
I got the cure. Oh, yeah, I got it right here, baby. I want you to come and get it. Yeah. This is Sherry from Bloomingdale, New Jersey, and you are listening to the Long Island Blues Warehouse.
It's Bonnie Raitt meets Janis Joplin, otherwise known as Nikki Armstrong, and whole lot of blues. Nikki, well done, kid. Thank well you, done. Mark. Unbelievable. I love the raspy thing you got going on. Just. Oh, you got a great blues voice. What can I say? Uh, thank you what can so I say? Much. You have a great voice. You got a great personality, which makes sense when it comes to your Wednesday gig. Ah. Little blues radio show thing you got going on. Yeah. WFDU. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Fairleigh Dickinson University. Look at, where is that located? Teaneck, New Jersey. Teaneck, New Jersey. Yep. What time Wednesdays can people tune you in? Every Wednesday at 1 p.m. to 3.45. And my show is called Blues in the Grooves, and it's on a format called Across the Tracks. So living out there in the Jersey area, you can tune in 89.1 FM. Yes. Outside of that uh, frequency, where can it's they tune in? It's streaming live and archived, WFDU.FM. WFDU.FM. Yes. How long have you been doing that? About five years. You, you like it? I love it. You got the bug early like me. Yeah, it's cool. Isn't it, it is. Yeah. The first time we did it, it's like you, you knew you you wanted to just keep doing it. Yeah. And I've caught your show a few times on the internet, and you sound great. Thank you. Um, you don't just play blues. No. You play a bit of a variety of things. Yeah, because my influences are kind of everything. And it it shows in your shows, Thanks. and it, and it's a cool little thing you got going. Nice eclectic alert, uh, a, a nice eclectic uh, selection of tunes that you like to squeeze in on that program. Yeah. And uh, a lot of fun, just a great program. And I encourage you all to check that out on Wednesdays when you can, and uh, enjoy what I do, listening to uh, the lovely and talented Nikki Armstrong on, as I mentioned, Wednesday afternoons. Very cool, kid. Very cool. Thank Have you, you done other radio programs before? Well, I was on a program before that, kind of like as a like co-hosting kind of thing for about five years before that, just as just for fun. And then when the slot became available, they asked me, and I said, "DJ." Cool. And you have that information up on your website. Yes, I do. We're going to talk about that later. Okay. I want to push the site now if I can. Please share with everybody your site so people can follow along with what you do. Okay, it's N-I-K-K-I-Armstrong.com. NikkiArmstrong.com. And you update that quite regularly, I'm, yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Any upcoming gigs to speak of? New York City stuff? Uh, we'll be BB back, Kings? We'll be back at Lucille's uh, March 14th. The small room at BB's? Yes. Which is a pretty big room. Yeah, they expanded the stage. Yay. They did. <laughs> we have a mutual friend that plays there every Monday night. Yeah, Mr. Paris. Mr. Yeah. John Paris, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we have another mutual friend that plays uh, in New York City after that jam over at the That's a great jam. Bitter End. Mr. Richie Canada. Yeah, Richie and the boys. You you pop down to that from do. time to time I'm when you're available. I'm actually gonna go next Monday. Are you really? I swear to God, I'm it's going. so I hard got, for we me. We got a plan, right, Sherry? It's so hard for me on Monday. Monday, it's the greatest jam. Those two jams. It is. But you know, I can't get home at five in the morning and start work at eight. Why not? I. You know what? Come That's on. a good question. I should. Yeah. I should. I'm not as young as I. We used just to. take a nap because it starts so late. Take a nap before you. Well, come the up. problem is John's. John Paris yes. starts from 8 p.m. till midnight. No, you can't do both. And then at midnight starts at the other, at the bitter end, you know, the, the other one with um, Kanata, as I mentioned. So it's tough. It's But you can't just go to one. you got to go to both. Right. I have to. I only go a few well, times. Well, I actually go to one in between the two, too. What's the other one? Ed Sullivan's Jam at Red Lion. No kidding. <laughs> Big night for music in the city, live music on Monday nights. You ever run your own jam? Oh, I did it for years and years. In Jersey? Right? In yeah. Jersey? Yeah, at a place called Mexicali Live. Mexicali yeah. Live. What a team. And I, and I, That's and, and I ran it before it was even there, but yeah, I no did that kidding. for five, five or six you, years. You had a nice run with that. Yeah, yeah. What made you stop? Uh, a conflicting jam. Then too I many other things going on. Somewhere else, too. All so right, too many other things going on. It happens, it happens. You're all over the place, kid, and rightfully so. Um, any more cruises coming up in the future? <laughs> What are you laughing at? <laughs> Do you not listen to the news? No, well, I'm forget that cruise. <laughs> forget that cruise. There's other. There's other cruise lines. Actually, no. Oh, hopefully a blues cruise. That's a good. That's idea. what I'm Thank saying. You. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Hopefully, yeah. So it doesn't have to be the Carnival such and such, whatever, <gasps> whatever that boat was that had all those issues very recently. But you know what? They say you got a better chance of getting struck by lightning twice in the same day than that happening again. <laughs> I don't know if I believe that, but... Yeah, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, next time you do a blues cruise, I'd love to uh, give me a little notice, kid, because I'd love to check that out and, and go. 
Yeah, and we, each, and we each, should go as a team, Mark. So I can really call that because that's a business uh, trip. <laughs> what are you laughing at? It is. No, I'm it saying we should go together. <laughs> we should work it out and go together. Well, let's work on that. Okay. Let's work on that. Let's uh, get into another tune. Okay. We'll come back and uh, talk to some of these fine players on this stage this evening. What are we doing next? Uh, this next piece that we're going to do, uh, I actually recorded with a great, great guitarist who passed away two years ago, a really good friend of mine. He was uh, uh, a legend in the acid jazz field of music. His name was Mar Melvin Sparks. Melvin Sparks. And so I recorded this song with him, and we rarely get to play it, but we've got Mr. Pete Levin here on keyboards, and we've got the great Jason Green on guitar. So we thought we'd pull it out and do it for you. It's called If It Don't Fit. You good to go? Yeah. Long Island Blues Warehouse, we are going to keep it moving. This is Nikki Armstrong and Whole Lot of Blues. Actually, it's a really old song. It was a cover that we did. Melvin picked it out. And uh, I forget who the original artist who did it, but it was a big hit in England in like the 60s. <laughs> well, nice rendition, kid. Thank you. Nice rendition. Uh, well done. Uh, speaking of monster guitar playing, and I really enjoyed what he just did on that. 
Uh, let's grab up, if you'll pull up to the mic, Jason Green. How you doing, Jason Green? I'm all right. How Welcome are you? to this big show. I appreciate oh. having you in here. Thank you for having us. Let's uh, talk about the history. Let's talk about when you began musically. Did you start as a young guy? Uh, fairly young. Uh, not as young as I would have liked. I, I started uh, when I was 15. I, I would have liked to have started younger, but my parents wouldn't buy me a guitar. So. But at age 15, you talked them into I, it. Yeah, no, I got a job and bought my own. You bought so, your own. Yeah, yeah. All right, I thought you thought you were going to say persistence paid off. But <laughs> All right, you became a working man at a young age. Yep. Bought your own guitar. What was the first guitar you ever owned? Oh, it was a Memphis Stratocaster. Very cool. What kind, of, in, what kind of music were you listening to in your mid-teens that made you decide you wanted to start playing? Honestly, uh... What kind of influence did you have? At first, before I started playing, I listened to hair metal. Oh, you Guns and Roses, that kind of thing. You went through that phase. Yes, but, but right. actually, honestly, as soon as I got a guitar, I saw the movie Crossroads and... Uh, Steve I. Yeah, and uh, my, my, I asked my older brother about some blues artists. He said, go get some Holland Wolf and get some Muddy Waters, and uh, I was hooked from there on. It's been blues ever since. You so. got the bug right after that. Yeah. Very nice, my man, very nice. Let's talk about projects you were doing, teens, 20s. Were, yeah. you, pl were you playing out? Yeah, I started playing in bars when I was 17. Um, I started playing for a living and going on the road uh, with an older blues man named Jimmy Lay when I was 21. I did that for about four years. Uh, then I got a gig with a guy from Clarksdale, Mississippi, named uh, Big Jack Johnson. Big Jack Johnson. Yeah, and I played with Big Jack no all, kidding. all over the world for about f almost four years. I play him on my Friday morning show. Oh, I learned a lot from Jack. He was uh, he was my, my daddy for a long time. Very yeah. cool. What a what a great education to to, to get from a guy like him. Yeah, yeah it was. Very cool, very cool. Yeah. How long have you been working with the lovely and talented Nikki Armstrong? I moved to New York in 2004, and I think uh, I started playing with her, you know, maybe about six months later. I don't know, something like that. It's been a while. It's been about... How long has it been that you're working about, with her? It's, it's about, it's been about years, seven years yeah. now. Don't make me do math. I, mean. <laughs> I, tr I try not to because I'm bad at it myself, but... Um, yeah, seven years. You guys are off to a good start, I'd have to say. Thank you you, very great much. dynamic you lend to this project, man. Keep right. going strong. I appreciate it. Jason thank Green you. on the guitar. I thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's grab on the bass if he'll head up to the saxophones, Mike. Oh, he's got his own. There it is. Mr. Lee Marvin. How you doing, Lee? I'm doing good. Welcome to the show, my man. Thank you. Holding down the bottom end real well, I got to begin by saying. Thank you. Let's talk about the history. You, you started as a young guy, right? Yeah. Like in the womb? Uh, a little later than that. A yeah. little later? Yeah. Like, like, did, did, I was 11, I think. I was, I was going to guess toddler days, but yeah. uh, at age 11, huh? What yeah. made you decide this was a direction you were going to head into in life? There just wasn't another direction. This was it. <laughs> <laughs> it was that, that cut and dry, huh? Yeah. What kind of influences? What were you listening to growing up? Oh, uh, Sly and the Family Stone, James Brown, stuff like that. At age 11, huh? Yeah. No kidding. No looking back, I guess. No, I've been playing my whole life. You self-taught? You, did you take lessons as a kid? Oh, yeah, I took a few lessons along the way. I eventually got a degree. I teach at Lehman College now. You do? Yeah. Very nice, my man. Very nice. How long have you been working with Nikki? I guess it's about six years. What were you doing before uh, the Nikki Armstrong project? Oh. Let's talk about a couple other things. You <laughs> Throw a couple of things at me. Uh, what have I? Yeah, I, 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 I've worked with uh, Pine Tom Perkins a few you gigs a year for Pine a long Tom? time. Yeah. No kidding. And uh, I was in the house band at the Blue Note for a long time doing the late night jam when Ted Kirsten had it. Oh, sure, sure. The good old days, huh? Yeah. Very yeah, that was a late hang. So you played all over, obviously. You yeah, yeah, I've played. Overseas as well? Yeah. Well, a hell of a job, my man. Hell Thank of you. a job holding down the bottom end real well. I, 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 dig the, uh, I, I dig the vibe that you give to this project, so uh, keep going strong. You've been in this project for how long yourself? Uh, about, long? Six, about six years. It's been about six years yeah. for you. Well, you're very young in your career, so I look forward to hearing a lot more <laughs> of what you're about with this project. Great dynamic, my man. Great, Great. dynamic. Thank you. Nikki? Yes. How you doing, kid? Great. So glad to have you in. I wish we were doing two hours. <laughs> we're not. So I say we get into another tune. We'll come back and talk to some more of these fine players. Let's put you people back to work. Okay, great. What do you want to do next? I'm going to do a ballad that I wrote with my friend Dave Fields. Oh. We had Dave in here a couple of months yeah, ago. Yeah, I know. As I, you know. I saw the video. It's yeah, we, nice guy. Nice yeah. guy. Great, great artist. Yeah, he is. New York Wonderful. City guy. Well, 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 great player. Great player. Yeah. So you, this next piece you wrote with him as well. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Love Can't Live Alone. You good to go? Yeah. Long Island Blues Warehouse. Let's keep it moving with the artist of the week, Nikki Armstrong, and a whole lot of blues. We have 
have so much in common Love is where we want to meet Just when we handle one problem Life is still ahead of beat It's so complicated There's no room for mistakes But we deserve to be together Not just running a no race Cause love can't live The little stuff that bothers The way things just don't fit What's happened to the laughter Now we never seem to click If what we built between us Can tear us apart Then how can I remember That I once was your heart Cause love can't Live alone. I wanna find you, catch you, send you to another place. Let me take you for a moment to a better space. the craziness piece well done kid Thank well you. done enjoyed that immensely <laughs> nikki armstrong whole lot of blues very nice on the keys if he'll turn that mic over to to himself there a little closer 
I want to talk to Mr. Pete Levin. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm doing good. Welcome to the show. Great having you in here. Thank you. Monster player, man. Monster player. I'm really enjoying what you're doing in here today. Um, Let's start with the history. Let's talk about when you began. A young guy? I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> Somebody said, you take piano lessons, kid. Uh, I did. The uh, parents goes, said take goes, piano lessons? Yeah, it goes back decades. But um, Decades ago. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, did you want to play the keys? Or did you, were, you, I, I didn't when I started. I uh, uh, took piano lessons in school. Uh, somehow got attached to the French horn. Uh, I'll jump ahead. Went to music school. Ended up at Juilliard doing a master's in French horn. and came out as a classical horn player. No kidding. And got uh, sidetracked by synthesizers. This was uh, this is in the seventies. I started in the Second World War. You understand? Do you I'm, still? I'm play, the old guy up here. Do you here. still play the French horn today? <laughs> no, not not too much. Okay. I, I gave it up. This uh, became uh, the passion later in life. Uh, yeah, it it is uh, somewhere in the oh, in the seventies. I was doing a lot of synthesizer work and uh, got better known for that. And, uh, Slipped from the uh, classical world uh, into the jazz world, actually. Uh, I never had a down period. I, I was doing a lot of studio work on synthesizers and keyboards in New York. and uh, Got a call to uh, go out on the road with Paul Simon. No kidding. Uh, and Gil Evans. Uh, and it just kept going from there. What year are we so, talking about? Uh, the biggest, 80s? The biggest, biggest Paul Simon tour was in 1979. This is the, one, the One Trick Pony. No era, kidding. Era, so. What an experience, so, huh? It was great. It was How great. long did that tour last? The uh, I think I don't know, six months, something, something like that. Uh, uh, you got a band. This was the Rolls Royce of bands. Was Steve Gadd, my brother Tony playing bass, uh, Eric Gale, who's gone, Richard T, my personal idol, who's gone. Didn't you said and, Steve Gadd as well. Steve Gadd, yes, very uh, cool. Yes. Uh, and Richard T, who I've uh, has been one of my models, keyboard models from the beginning, who's also passed. And great horn section, a gospel group, Jesse Dixon singers from Chicago, were just backing Paul up. It was amazing, tremendous. It was an amazing tour. What an like, experience, huh? It was. It was what an yeah, experience. Uh, what'd you do after that musically? Uh, I got into jazz. I was doing a lot of studio work, uh, doing a lot of synth programming on R and B records or for a lot of people. A lot long, of sessions. Long listed. A lot of session stuff. Uh, uh, toured with Vanessa Williams, more with Paul. Uh, Gil got involved with Sting. I'm we, sorry, we you said some... Vanessa Williams? Yes. You said that so nonchalantly, like, no big deal. Vanessa freaking Williams? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Paul, I mean, uh, the, the, just a tremendous background. I had no idea. I've been, uh, I've been pretty lucky. I'm a yeah, huge fan of hers, man. Yeah, and she's great. She's great. One how, of... how did that opportunity present itself? Uh, just some people I knew. She was doing some stuff. Uh, we did some things in the studio. Uh, that uh, Lenny White, the great drummer, was producing a lot of R&B at that time. Uh, Lenny, uh, Lenny and I have been friends since the Gil Evans you know, era, I think, 73, I think I met I met Lenny. And, and uh, I'm now doing uh, jazz organ trios with Lenny White and Dave Stryker. Today you do that? You doing that today? Yes, yes I am. We're Very doing, nice. We're doing it uh, uh, next Wednesday at uh, the Iridium. Uh, our organ trio with Dave Stryker and Lenny White. And four horn players, uh, that are Gil Evans alumni, are coming in to join us, and we're doing a bunch of Gil Evans music. And, Have you played with yeah. Les Paul at the Iridium ever? I never played with him, no. Uh, I um, met him so, several times. I, I, but, I, but, I'm but, sure but, you but, have. But, but uh, I never uh, played with him. Of, you probably have pictures all over your house, and, um, if I had to take a guess. But the blues, I'm kind of an interloper. I'm more of a jazz... Uh, I'm the token jazz guy up the here. Token <laughs> jazz the token guy. jazz guy. They did some good blues, blues player. I played it... Uh, uh, for a little while with Joe Lewis Walker. You uh, played with Joe as well. Who I, who I love. I love his playing. And currently involved with Gabe Butterfield, Paul's son. No kidding. And we're doing a ro- revival of a lot of that music with Jimmy, very Jimmy cool. Vivino and a bunch of guys from Woodstock, which is where Jimmy I Jimmy Vivino, you said? Yep. From uh, Conan O'Brien. Yep. Very cool. Okay. Very so, cool. So that's... Uh, Pete, I had no idea it. about the history, my man, and that's a, one of the things I get a kick out of with this show. Oh. I don't, I, I don't search too heavy into the background. I like to learn as we're live. Uh-huh. And uh, what a tremendous, tremendous background! What I just made all that up. I, you know what? If you, if you did, <laughs> it, I, it was worth it to hear, man. There's a bunch of polka bands that I came through. <laughs> like, that's a, that's a. How long have you been working with Nikki? Uh, I don't remember. On and off for, for, for I forget stuff. Now. I'm old. Very cool. And she's great. I love her. Great history, her. my man. Great history. Another Thanks. tremendous dynamic to this project. And Thanks. I hope to see a lot more of you with, with the Nikki Armstrong project. Yes. You're not great. going anywhere? 
You're not going anywhere? Not for another 15 minutes. <laughs> Are we up to that point in time already? Uh, okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And hopefully no. sometime after that, I'm, I'm hoping. Yes, so, we were real. It's a great show. Thank monster you Monster player, my man. Pete thank Levin you. on the keys. I thank you, sir. Thanks for having Really me. enjoy this what you're great. about. Uh, let me grab on the sax if I can, Mr. Rob Chaseman. How you doing, Rob? I'm good. How are you? So you've been on this stage with me before with a, f with a, with a mutual friend of ours. Yes. Chaz DiPaolo. That's right. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I'm trying to get back in here to do this. I, if I talk to him, I would definitely let, no, let him know. No, when you talk to him. That's Not what I meant. when. That's what I meant, when. Let's, uh, let's talk about the history with you. Let's talk about when you began with the horn. Uh, basically, I guess since I could um, carry the case. I'm I'm guessing uh, you play the whole horn family. Yeah, I play the I do I play the soprano, alto, tenor, Barry. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Uh, what'd you start with? I actually started on the alto because I think m most kids start on the alto for uh, educational reasons, and then they, and then, then I moved to tenor in in high school, and this is the tenor saxophone that I played in high school. Is that a fact? Yep. It ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. It's, I, I it's ugly, it. but it works. It works, and it works very, very well. Thank you. Um, how long have you been working with Nikki? Um, how long, Nikki? <laughs> Why are we laughing at that? Um, probably, I guess, like... Ten years. Ten years, yeah. About a decade years. now, huh? Yeah, sure. All right. She gave me my start up here. She was... She, she, she was uh, I, I I met her at a jam, and I just hopped up on stage with my sax, and then, yeah. And the rest is history. And the rest is history, right? And the rest is history. Monster player, my man. I expect nothing less out of, you know, based on what we're seeing with Nikki, with, with, with all these great guys. I mean, you're just a, a tremendous addition. Tremendous Thank addition. Thanks so much. Keep going strong, my man, and give Chaz my best, and I, uh, I will. tell him to call me. All right, I tell will. Tell him to call me. Rob Chaseman on the sax, thank you so much. Let's uh, grab Jim Toscano if we'll pull the uh, mic around behind him there. There it is. Back there on the drum kit. How you're you doing, make, Jim? You're not going to make me sing, right? That would be very bad. Be very uh, bad. Well, I guess i got to cross this <laughs> off now. Cross that off. How you doing? You all right? Good, man. You've been playing the kit since you uh, probably started walking, I'm guessing. Probably around 10, 11 years old. It was that late in life for you? Yeah, that late. What made you decide that was the direction you were going to head into in life? Well, honestly, I was walking home from, from school. And I found a bass drum in a tree. In a tree? Seriously. Hanging on a branch in a tree. And I saw the bass drum, and I said, wow. Wow, drum. I got, wow, so I got to have one? I climbed the tree, took the bass drum, threw it down, took it home, and proceeded to beat on this bass drum that I, it only had one skin on it. So I laid it down like a table and started playing on this bass drum, and that's kind of what got me inspired. You enjoyed what you were doing and decided maybe I should get n another drum piece. Maybe we should get some more drums and then... Yeah, and before so. you know it, have a whole kit like you're playing on today. <laughs> exactly. Um, what you self-taught? You a self-taught guy? No, I actually in junior high school I started taking lessons with a local teacher and learning how to read and playing in the concert band and all the school stuff. What were you doing musically before uh, the Nicky Armstrong project? Um, I kind of flowed from song singer songwriters and um, different instrumental situations. I I do a lot of recording work and. I kind of bounce around from thing to thing. And I also teach a lot, so I do a lot of educational you stuff. You teach the drums. kit, the drum kit. Yeah. Very nice. Very yep. nice. When are you going to have your first drum clinic? I've been having them, yeah. Y you do do the clinics. Yeah, I've been doing the clinics. Because so. you definitely ought to be. And oh, I'm glad thanks, to hear man. that you are. So it thanks. just makes sense. You, you feels good feeling you know, what you're doing back there. It's, it's got a nice feel to it. Oh, thanks, man. So I'm enjoying it. Uh, how long have you been working with uh, Nikki? I think about a year. That, it's been a Is couple of years, right? that's it? Yeah. All right. A couple of years. Well, keep going strong, my man. Thank you. Jim Toscano and the drum kit. I thank you, sir. All right. Nikki Armstrong, we got time for two more. Okay. What are we doing next? We're going to do a song that uh, Rob and I wrote together, and uh, it's a little bit different. It's got that real rock edge to it, and it's called Ferocious. You good to go? Yeah. Long Island Blues Warehouse, let's keep it moving. This is Nikki Armstrong and Whole Lot of Blues.
Excellent job, Nikki Armstrong. Well done, kiddo. Please share with us the website one more time, if you would. Thank you. It's N I K K I Armstrong.com. Nikki Armstrong.com. You have five CDs that are out. Yeah, you're right. And where can people find those CDs? Uh, At Nikki Armstrong.com? I think there's some up there, and they're also up on CD Baby. CD Baby and as Amazon. well. Yeah. Well, well done, kiddo. We Thank had a great you, time in here. You got, you're going to play us out in a minute. Before you do, let's do a couple of quick goodbyes. We're going to start on the keys right behind me. Mr. Pete Levin, thank you so much. Back there on the guitar, Mr. Jason Green. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. On the drum kit, we got to thank Jim Toscano. Over there on the sax, Mr. Rob Chaseman. On the bass, Lee Marvin. Thank you, sir. And last... But certainly not least, we need to thank the lovely and extremely talented Nikki Armstrong, lead vocals. Thank you so much, Nikki. Thank you very much, Mark. Had a blast in here with you guys and today. And thanks to everybody here at EKO and Long Island Blues Warehouse. Thank you so much. I can't wait till next Wednesday to check out your next live radio <laughs> broadcast. <laughs> and you on Friday. And me on Fridays at WUSB.FM at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Always check that out if you can. For the Long Island Blues Warehouse, I'm Mark Klein. Always remember to go to that website, liblues.com. And EKO Studios, the official studio of the Blues Warehouse at EKOproductions.com. Steve, Ralph, and Ralph, thank you again. Always appreciate the kick-butt job they do in this studio. Nikki Armstrong, you're going to play us out? Yes, I am. I'm going to do a song, and I want everybody to sing along, even if they're at home. And even if they're watching it, not right now, but later. And the lyric is, I feel like I'm on a rocket, and my dimensions are all shook up. I feel like I'm on a rocket and I'm never going to stop. We say goodbye to this week's featured artist. Thank you so much. This is Nikki Armstrong, Whole Lot of Blues. Feel like I'm on a rocket I'm on the mountains of Oshaka
Chocó bien 